Hello everyone, thanks for the opportunity to present here before this audience. My name is Gabriel Rada, I'm a physician, I'm professor at the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile uh, in Santiago, Chile. I'm the co-founder of Epistemonicos Project and chairman of Epistemonicos Foundation. This project started as a way of responding to the enormous amount of information available to inform health decisions in the world in the last years. The number of systematic reviews, as you can see in this graph, has skyrocketed in the last years. So we decided to create a database that contains all these systematic reviews and also all the primary studies included in those reviews uh, and other types of evidence like guidelines, reports and others. Epistemonicos database is now the largest database of health evidence in the world and it's completely free and multilingual available on the web. As you can see here, it now contains more than 200,000 systematic reviews. That is an enormous amount of information and that constitutes the base of all the things that I'm going to describe now. In 2016, we established a formal partnership with Cochrane Collaboration, uh, which is a very important uh, organization in the world in this area, and we share very similar ideals ethos and mission. So it's very important to have this in mind for those of you that are more familiar with this organization. Building upon the Epistemonicos database and all the information and data we had there, we created a new platform called Living Overview of the Evidence or LOVE. This platform aims to compile all the existing evidence uh, of a specific topic and try to continuously update and organize the information around it. It's very systematic, it's very similar to a systematic review in terms of very comprehensive search strategies uh, and uh, all the steps that are needed to make the, pro the process reproducible. Um, and um, trying to find a topic to test this system, we selected uh, the therapeutic use of cannabis, cannabis-derived products and synthetic cannabinoids one or one and a half year ago. So we embarked in this project. We um, uh, recruited a very large number of researchers in order to be able to uh, process all this information. And here you can see the amount of information we have uh, processed. Uh, it, this was updated a little bit more than a week ago. We have uh, been collecting systematic reviews, studies, and all in a similar way and very systematic way. As you would understand, it's impossible to summarize all the results of the different conditions or symptoms in this presentation. But we have compiled all the conclusions of the different summaries that we have produced and different systematic reviews uh, of the individual conditions. And they can be summarized in the following way. There is no medical condition in which the benefits derived from the use of cannabis or cannabis-derived products are superior to its adverse effects and risk. And basically, this conclusion comes from three kinds of individual conclusions in the different conditions or symptoms. There are some where cannabis or its derivatives are not effective and are associated with frequent adverse effects. There is a second group where cannabis or its derivatives may produce a low benefit but also produce frequent adverse effects that exceeds the benefits. And the third conclusion, it is not clear whether cannabis or its derivatives are effective or not because the certainty of the evidence is very low and they are associated with frequent adverse effects. The reason why our conclusions are some way different from previous reports or systematic reviews is probably explained by the comprehensiveness of our search approach and also because this information has been updated until very recently. To make sense of all this information, you probably need more details about the results and conclusions for each condition or symptom. All this project will be presented later this year in the Cochrane Colloquium in Edinburgh. We have also published 14 articles in peer-reviewed journals up to now, but we expect to publish 170 articles by August this year. You can also see more details about the whole project and the methods and what is already accomplished 
in the Epistemonicus Foundation website and also you can access and navigate all the information by question, by condition, by symptom in the LOVE platform. Thanks for the opportunity of presenting this project. I'm open to answer all questions about the methods, the results, the conclusions of individual reviews, and also how we have uh, assembled all the reviews into a broad summary. Uh, you can see here all my contact details. Thank you.